Uh, probably should explain what client side and server side decorations yeah. are for anyone who hasn't heard me rant before. Um, yeah. So server side decorations are basically where your desktop applies window decorations to the window. So window decorations are things like the title bar, the close button, a little icon that says this is what the application is and things like that. If it's server side, the desktop is applying this. If it is client side, then that is up to the application to design itself. Now, client side does have some benefits. You can integrate things like a menu bar into the header. You can integrate like other application components. And if you look at macOS applications, for example, they heavily use client side decorations and it works quite well on macOS because, you know, Apple has a much stronger hold on like uh, UI design. If you want to be on the app store, you got to kind of like, you know, make it fit more with what they're trying to do. Yeah. Apple way or the highway. Basically. Yeah. Now, the problem is that GNOME only supports client-side decorations and doesn't have server-side as a fallback. If we're looking at something like KDE, though, they allow you to do client-side decorations if you want them, but if you don't add them, every application is just given server-side decorations and that's fine. So that's why if you open an application yeah. on KDE, it's going to have a consistent title bar. Whereas on GNOME, yes, some of them... If it's like a GNOME core application it's going to look fine. But other applications, it's going to depend on how the developer does it. If they use Libday Core, it'll look Gnome-y. But if they use something custom, it'll look really weird. And yeah, that, that's pretty much the landscape. Yeah. So my my issues with it, um, <laughs> from a game dev perspective, and um, was it Factorio or was it someone else? That uh, yeah, Factorio, about yeah. It? Yeah, that was um, plenty heavy, heavy about it. Yeah, they... I, I'm kind of with them on it. Um, it's hard enough to support Wayland mm -hmm. uh, on Linux. It's hard enough to support Linux in general because you have to think about Xorg and Wayland because there's going to be people who run the game on Xorg and under Wayland. And that's just going to happen as long as Xorg is a thing. And yes, X Wayland is a thing, but sometimes that doesn't exactly work out well of... <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's, it's subtly different and it breaks mm -hmm. the game. Um, but that's fine. Whatever. Um, the problem with CSDs in game development is with a game, um, you're not typically thinking about the game as a window uh, when you're developing it because mm -hmm. it's, it's a game. Um, it, you're, giving, you're giving a canvas to render stuff to and... Um, it can have a window border, and a lot of people will play their game in windowed mode, and that's great. Uh, most people will play it in full screen mode. That's also great. Um, and in that case, you won't have a window border, which is fine, because well, you're in full screen mode. Well, and you full screen that. or borderless windowed. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I say b full screen, I do mean borderless windowed. Okay, yeah, but fair even, enough. Yeah. Even then, you won't have a window border. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, um, yep. But in windowed mode, you need some way to reposition the game window mm -hmm. so that you can move it onto another monitor or something. Some games let you resize it, most don't. Mine does. Um, and you need a way to close the game. Um, most games on PC do have an in-game exit button, but sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you need to immediately close it and don't want to navigate to the main menu. You need a way to be able to minimize and maximize it. You need that stuff. Um, and when you're designing a game, you're kind of assuming that the game engine or the operating system is going to do it for you and put that window border in place. Because on Windows, that's going to happen. You tell Win32, I want a window border. Mm -hmm. It'll give you a window border. Um, you tell it, I don't want it to be resized. It won't let you resize it. Stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, on KDE, you will get a window border because it has server-side decorations. On macOS, even, uh, because Apple has so much of a tight control over that desktop environment, um, they probably do the same thing as Windows, where you can use a CSD and you'll get the, the fancy features of a CSD, like being able to put header bars and stuff like that in it, but most of the time you don't need it, and so they probably have server-side decorations for that case, or they have some sort of SDK that puts 
the client side decorations in place for you, and it's nice and consistent with the operating system. Yeah, I, I can't comment the, completely on how Apple does it, but neither can I. Honestly, I, I'm just assuming. Yeah, I, I do that, have that a Mac, sounds but I like the way Apple it. would do it. But with GNOME, your only option is CSDs. Mm -hmm. Um, at least to my knowledge, I, I. I I think that's been a complaint for a very long time is their lack of support for server side degrees. Yeah, I honestly this is don't pay enough attention. This is the state on. it's in. So. Um, there's a protocol for it. This is where it gets really dumb. There's a protocol for it that I believe they might have act. They might have been like, yeah, we're we're good with this, and then never wanted to implement it. Or I, maybe I'm thinking of DRM leasing, but I, there is a Wayland protocol that they just at this stage refuse to implement. Yeah. So, with, with CSDs in game development, um, when you're working in a game engine like Unity, you kind of have to rely on Unity to, Unity to do that for you, mm -hmm. because you don't have control, necessarily, over the, how the game window is created. You have settings that you can set when you're doing the build, but you don't get to, like, actually call into the Win32 or the Xorg or X11 or any of those APIs that control the game window, because mm -hmm. it's done by the game engine. Um, so if I were to implement a CSD into Socially Distant, how would I do it? How would I tell the window manager that I'm dragging the window? Mm -hmm. How would I tell it to close? I, I could probably use an in-game game engine API to do it, but then how would I maximize? How would I minimize? How would I um, tell the window manager what icon to use? And mm -hmm. we won't go there with the XDD top-level icon thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> we won't go there. But all of these things I have to consider as a developer that maybe my game engine just doesn't have an API for me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be able to reach out to the, the operating system level APIs because you just don't do that in a game engine. It's, if, you, if you do do it, it's extremely complicated. Um, and it's, it's not something you want to worry about. Mm -hmm. um, so with Socially Distant, what I ended up doing, or what I plan on doing, if I can even figure it out, is I'm going to have a toggle in the settings menu. You go into settings and you go interface mm -hmm. and you turn on under compatibility in-game window decorations. Mm -hmm. And it turns the in-game status bar into a CSD. It's not implemented yet. I'm just mm -hmm. planning it. But that's what I'm planning on doing because I don't know how else to do it in a reliable way. But then someone's going to open the game, not realize that's a setting, and then they don't have a border, and then they're going to file a bug report, and then they're going to be like, what the hell? Right, And I right. don't want to deal with that. Um, and that's something I have to worry about as a game dev. But then there's the accessibility aspect of it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do use applications, even on KDE, that have CSDs. Um, there's Stream Controller, which is what does my Stream Deck now. Um, and there's a couple flat packs that I use that, that have CSDs. Um, they give you a lot of power, and that's great. But one of the things I will always assert is that a menu bar, your typical file edit view, mm -hmm. stuff like that, is a lot better on PC than... Um, a, a hamburger menu or a sidebar in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because, and, and this was a KDE thing, and it's not even related to CSDs, but when I was configuring console, the terminal, uh, the menu bar in the corner, or the main menu thingy, the hamburger menu in the corner, navigating that with a screen magnifier is hell. Right. Because it's a drop-down, but the very f the top level menu of that drop down is completely fine to navigate. The sub menus, the moment your mouse leaves the bounding box of the menu, it closes. Oh, and there's no way to keep it open. Okay. It is hell. Um, and that's that's annoying for console. But at least I can still close the window and stuff like that in a very common way, mm -hmm. and generally navigate the application. And I did actually set it up to use the menu bar. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's great now. But with a with an application in the GNOME ecosystem, I'm basically forced to work in a way that is what the developer set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they're using CSDs, then if they're using web decor, then it's probably going to be very GNOME and it's going to be fine and consistent. That's fine. But if they're using something custom, I'm at their whim. Um, and they could really do some really hanky things, like Spotify, for example. Um, 
it has a CSD on Windows, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work on KDE. And there is just no way for me to get into my Spotify preferences right now. It's buggy. It's annoying. And it's, it's not accessible. I want my Windows to be laid out in a consistent way, controlled by my desktop. I have not opened up Spotify in a while. Let me just check it. Because I, I usually just use Spotify on my phone. Um, yeah. I, I use it on PC, and it does get a server-side decoration on KDE. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing the server-side decoration, yeah. Yeah, and then there's a big, thick, black bar at the top. Oh. And that's where the CSD is supposed to go. And that's where you oh. get your preferences and account settings and stuff like that. And it just doesn't render. Oh. Yeah. What the hell? Um, <laughs> I'll... And, and unfortunately... This is what happens when one desktop environment in the entire ecosystem decides we don't want to support C or SSDs, mm -hmm. and you're on your own to implement CSDs, because that's what we're doing, and deal with it. You end up with applications that don't quite do it right. Huh. I don't know if that's... Well, Spotify's Electron application, I believe. I don't know if that's a yeah. problem with how Electron does it, or if it's a problem with what Spotify is doing. I, I think it's a problem with what Spotify's doing, because mm -hmm. they do a custom header bar for Spotify, because I, I'm very familiar with the layout on Windows. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's not there on Linux, and it, it probably is there on GNOME, but I'm not on GNOME. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the whole, um, the whole CSD, SSD thing isn't just a problem in games. It's also a problem in applications using, like, certain libraries and certain toolkits. Here's, here's a fun one I found um, a little bit ago. I'll send, you, I'll send you the link to it. Um, this is from back in 2021, where people realized that VS Code was broken on GNOME because it just didn't have window decorations. Because at that point, uh, Electron didn't support... Uh, like a fallback on GNOME. <laughs> and that's 2021 with VS Code. Mm -hmm. um, and they're probably going to be on an updated or up to date Electron build. Discord certainly isn't. <laughs> you know what else doesn't have a proper working CSD that should be there on Windows but isn't on Linux? Mm -hmm. Discord. Mm -hmm. And then a number of other Leyland protocols that just don't fucking work on Discord. <laughs> I, that's, that's... I I was testing this with someone. Discord. I don't know who at Discord's doing this. Somebody somebody at Discord is like having a bit of fun with Linux because they half implemented the protocol. If you go into the like screen sharing, it'll show the like all of the things you can capture with Pipewire, and it will actually show it accurately. But when you try to select it. It will error out, and then you like select it again and again and again. It just starts looping. But they've half yeah, implemented I had that the other day. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've half <laughs> implemented it. I don't know what's happened. I don't know who started this, but somebody's trying to fix it. 